Hi, I'm Jim Erickson, Editorial Director at InformationManagement.com, and I'm at the TDWI World Conference in Las Vegas. I'm speaking with Ralph Hughes, who's the Chief Systems Architect at Serogenics. And Ralph um, is a very well-known speaker and keynoter at a lot of events, and he's talking this time around about what he calls a survival skill uh, in, in terms of requirements gathering in the context of Agile data warehousing. So Ralph, thanks for, for joining us. And why, First of all, why, what are you talking about a survival skill? What do you mean by that in requirements gathering in that context? Well, our emphasis is agile data warehousing. Mm -hmm. Agile is the art of getting a team programming quickly and getting something accomplished and delivering in small increments that continually make the sponsors of the project feel like they're getting value out of that development team. Mm -hmm. and, but what we have seen as an anti-pattern that we want to avoid is teams start programming quickly and they do deliver lots of code, but when you step back and look at it, it seems like somebody put a brick on the accelerator pedal and no one's behind the steering wheel right. and the car's going in circles. Right, and so there might be a couple entrees to that problem in terms of a lack of leadership, but, but the requirements part of it's really at the foundation, right? That should be the reference material for all these things as you keep adjusting and going forward, right? Absolutely. I think requirements have some subtlety to it in that you have often an executive who's signing the checks for the projects, but are they going to spend a lot of time in the project room directing the team on a day-to-day -day basis? No. It's not even going to be a director reporting to the executive. It's probably going to be a manager. Mm, okay. And so now suddenly you have a gap between the person who's signing the check and who's directing They're the right. team. Right. And if you are a project lead and follow only the direction of the mid-level manager, you are running the risk of not pleasing the person who's signing the check. Right. Unfortunately, they're only going to check in with the team every three months, every six months. But they will call you to account for all the money you've spent. That's very interesting because I think a lot of people have assumed with you know the, a lot of the talk around Agile and methodologies and, and being nimble and being collaborative and being able to adjust on the fly that those things are really behind us. But there's still the status quo for a lot of these projects. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and the budgeting happens first and then the person who's in charge of directing it. Is it a lack of, is, is it, are some of the business dynamics and the changes along the way getting in the way too or is it really more about not paying enough attention to that? foundational uh, requirements process and documentation. The business dynamics are certainly involved. We call it the next shiny object problem, <laughs> which is your mid-level manager comes in and say, today we are working on voice of the customer <laughs> analytics. And you as a team say, well, that's going to take us three iterations to get going. And mm -hmm. you demo something after every iteration. Well, maybe you only get a third of it done, you do a demo for that mid-level manager, and suddenly she says, oh no, cost containment is all the vogue now. That's the burning fire of a du jour. So this next iteration, we're going to work on cost containment. Well, you haven't even gotten voice of the customer done. Right. And so it's always another shiny object, and it can just burn a team out because they never get the sense that they got anything done. Sure. A survival skill would be to put some constraints on what the business could ask for, so at least you get the continuity that you need to deliver something of value. Yeah, yeah, and you've been, of course, at this for a long time, and, and we've all seen, you know, sort of the dynamics of business shift and accelerate very much. Is it still the same, the same kind of collaborative leadership requirements, you know, foundational type of skill set it always was, or has it changed so much like everybody keeps saying that the rate of change is so strong? Okay. I believe that a lot of the fundamentals are the same, but yeah. what's clouding the picture is a whole new set of tools. Yeah. We are seeing products come out that I call analyst-driven data governance and yeah. prototyping, mm -hmm. where a analyst can sit down and instead of having to convene big committee and review sessions in order to get a few fundamental terms defined, they can, from their experience, type in what they think those terms mean and oh, then have okay. a workflow engine circulate those definitions <laughs> among the okay. community uh -huh. until they get a consensus uh -huh. on what they mean. Uh -huh. So in some ways uh, that's to our disadvantage because now you can have a lot of analysts out there generating a lot of churn on these terms. Yeah, yeah. A lot of semantic interpretations of what we're actually doing, right? And if the organization doesn't have the discipline to drive all those definitions to a resolution before coding starts, you can have multiple projects going in different directions on the same concept. Right, okay. Well, it sounds like the same as it ever was, just tougher and faster and harder and 
more of the same. So I appreciate your time, Ralph Hughes, Chief Systems Architect at Sarah Genix. I'm Jim Erickson at the TDWI Conference in Las Vegas. Thank you.